Hey guys and girls, my name's Dan. Welcome back to The Forge. In today's episode of Trust Me, I'm a Blacksmith, we're going to be making this utensil rack and I'm going to be talking about some of the things that I wish I had have known when I'd started blacksmithing. So this video isn't a direct how to make. I will be making this key press in the video but I won't be talking in great detail about how to make it but I will be talking about some of the places um, that you can improve, some of the places you might find pitfalls, how to correct mistakes, how to prevent mistakes from happening. So basically a tips and tricks video, a lot like the tong video I did recently where instead of making showing you how to make a pair of tongs, I talked about some of the pitfalls and problems where that come with tong making. I'll leave a link to that video up here. This video was inspired by Alistair and Mark's video over at Dirty Shed Creations. Um, definitely go and check out the channel, especially if you're into your all-round crafts. Um, Alistair is a very um, capable uh, craftsman and he's exploring blacksmithing. And during his video where he talks about blacksmithing, he makes some mistakes and he causes himself some problems. And I thought what I'd do is not only shed a little bit of light on their channel and promote them a little bit, but also make a video to help Alistair, but also to make a video to help you guys and girls at home. And if you are a beginner blacksmith and you're interested in improving your skills or you're just getting into the hobby and you wanna find out some more stuff, um, I've got two bits of information that might be helpful to some people at the end of the video. So stick around for those. Um, one of the things relates to this lovely pile of hammers and the other relates to some courses I will be running here in the UK, hopefully very soon, um, conditions depending. Right, I'm gonna leave that there. I'm gonna get on with the video and show you how um, some of the things that I wish I knew whilst making this key press. Uncle Al talks a lot about it not looking very good to start with because you're working through a series of processes and he's quite correct but if you are going to be working through a series of processes try and keep everything straight and parallel and nice and true it will me uh, mean that you'll have less problems later on. Okay so I've got where I need to be and I've got where I want to start so what I'm going to do is I'm going to work towards that. A lot of people think concentrate on working up here and think that Having this space up here is the best way to get started and get your stock moved. But if I want to start the taper back here, I'm just going to start walking forward from that point into this one. And I'm also going to leave the material I don't want the forge off of the anvil. If it's on the anvil and I hit it, it will bend and change the direction. If I don't have it on and I hit it, and even if I accidentally hit that piece, nothing's going to happen to it. First rule, keep it straight and parallel. And looking nice and tidy. Understanding process. Whilst you work in the heat, work out what tools you need next. Work out what step you're going to be moving into. It's very evident in the video that uh, the Dirty Shed Boys put up is that um, uh, Al was losing his hammer all over the place. The tongs weren't ready, that X wasn't right, this wasn't here. So that's something to be really conscious about. Being able to put your hands on your hammer as you walk over to the anvil or something like that is a super important element of this process. Probably 80% of all the problems that I see beginners having is not having the right tongs for the right job. If you can hold it with your hand, hold it. If you can wear a glove and hold it, obviously be careful 
if you get the gloves wet or you start sweating the gloves, there's a chance you can burn your hand inside the glove without realizing it. But if you, uh, if you can get the right pair of tongs to hold the material properly, you will have less problems. This comes as part of the whole preparation thing. Be ready for the event that's about to happen. Get the right tongs. Order of process. Work out what's going to happen next. Work out how you're going to get to that stage. And work out any problems that you might get if you do that stage before another one. Now one of the things that Alistair did was he bent these up after he bent the central piece up. These are a bugger to bend up, uh, especially if you're trying to get nice 90s. Um, and uh, he could have saved himself a lot of swearing if he'd have done them before he did the main body. Okay, so that's that part made, quite happy with it. Uh, it's bigger than I thought it was gonna be. I didn't really think about measurements whilst we were doing this. Um, however, I've cut four pieces of 12 mil uh, round, so that's a half inch round bar, 100 mil long, or four inches in length. I'm gonna now forge ourselves our little hooks, um, and then I'll drill some holes and rivet everything together. Just done a bit of prep work, getting it all set up so that they'll go on here. I'm not particularly happy with these um, these little hooks. Uh, they're not. I've just copied what the guys did uh, on the thing. Um, for me, I think I'm gonna um, after I've riveted them together, I might change them. I'll talk about that at the end. Uh, but uh, what I'm gonna do now is just rivet these together and then give it a good brushing and then also um, uh, beeswax it up and then we're pretty much. Done. Uh, I've also drilled out the holes here. I am going to use this hopefully um, to hold the cooking utensils that we make here for the channel. Um, but uh, yeah, so so far so good. Um, 
All right, let's get this riveted. Okay, it's at this point in the video uh, that I was working through the process of riveting these up and realized that I didn't have the right tool for the job. And this is almost exactly the same thing to do with the tongs. If you haven't got the right tool for the job, it's gonna cause you problems. And sometimes the easiest and simplest answer is to make a tool. Now, I've used uh, an extra piece of steel here to raise the height of the, um, the riveting tool, but as you can see, I'm struggling. And I'm okay struggling, it's a one-off job, but if this is something that you wanted to do on a regular basis, it's genuinely probably better to make um, make the right tool for the job and making tools will get you out of a lot of situations and save you a lot of time and hassle and uh, headaches basically. Before I move on and big up Alistair and Mark anymore um, because they did put together a really good video i just like to cover some more points that I don't think I covered in the video I don't think um, Al really mentioned in his um, video other than needing to practice. Um, this object here, this key press, key rack, utensil holder, is a great example of I have had experience putting tapers in, I've had experience punching holes, I've had experience closing rivets, um, I've had experience working out section size, I've had experience drawing out, I've had experience making these round pieces on the end, um, and I've also made the odd hook and drawn out the odd taper, and I have collected skills that allow me to make objects. Now, is this exactly how I wanted it to look? Well, I didn't do a drawing, but in my head I was just copying the Dirty Shed Boys, um, and um, I, I'm not 100% happy with it. There's a few things I would like to change, and I will go on to change them at some point in the future, but the point is that because I have honed skills separately, I'm now able to utilize those at any time. They might not necessarily be the right dimensions, they might not be 100% the right shape, but the next time I make this, if I ever made something like this again, I would be better prepared and I would be definitely be able to make this much better on a second or third attempt. And this is one of the things that I think is really important. I know that um, Uncle Al covers it a couple of times. Being able to consciously assess what it is that you're doing, understanding where you're making mistakes and then moving forward is a really vital part of your black smithing practice. You need to understand where you are making mistakes and how you can improve on those mistakes. I'm gonna show you some examples now of where I make mistakes in my current practice on a day-to-day -day basis. One of the ways I make ends meet in the workshop is by making and selling tools. And one of the tools I make and sell is hammers. Now, um, I pride myself on trying to produce the best quality hammers that I can make. They might not be the best quality hammers that you find on Instagram, they might not be the sexiest pictures of the hammers that you might see on Instagram, but they are definitely the best quality that I can make and I think that that is a very high standard. Uh, we've got the personal big boy, this is my new hammer. Um, it is based off a Stanley pattern but takes advantage of some of those Nicer uh, rounding hammer qualities that I quite like for drawing out, um, but generally slightly lighter hammer, longer handle, and um, just a really good looking shape, I think. However, this is one of the uh, rounding hammers that I make. This is a, a round, double round face as opposed to a circle square. Um, and it's um, it's kind of in a Brian Brazil-esque style, but more like the farrier rounding turning hammers with the long handle. This is three and a half pounds. Um, I really like this little hammer. Um, so it's taken me a long time to get to here. So everything from the heat treating process to the handling process to the, the actual construction and design of the hammers, making of the tools and understanding each step in the process to get to this point. Now I want to show you some a hammer I've not, never made before that I've made for a customer uh, that I'm still not happy with and show you some of the steps that I've had to take along the way to get to certain points. This is a driving hammer or a nailing hammer or nailer and the job of this hammer is very specific. It's for putting the, sh the nails into horseshoes on a horse and the hammerhead is a normal standard hammerhead for driving nails in and the claw at the back is designed to break the exposed end of the nail off. And I've made this for a customer, I think it's going out to the States, I'm pretty sure Sean lives in the States. 
and um, I'm very proud of it. It's a very good looking hammer, it's a good weight, uh, but there are some problems with it. And the biggest issue, and I don't know if you can see this, is I broke the back out. Now, the customer themselves would like, uh, they ordered some other hammers as well, and they're waiting on those, they're finished and done, but they're waiting on the product uh, that I'm trying to make for them to get out to them, and I've made quite a few. So I'm gonna go grab those now. Um, but it's making a compromise between uh, what the, comp uh, the customer expects and what I expect of myself. And um, I am happy enough to let this go. Is it right? No, it's not right. There's a lot wrong with it still. There's a lot I'd like to improve. But let's see some of the places or where I've come from to get to here. Whenever we make anything, uh, the devil is in the detail. Now I'll start from oldest to newest. This was the first hammer that I made. Uh, it's a lovely shape and it's, um, it's a reasonably good design. I'm quite happy with this little hammer. However, it is too light. It's not heavy enough. It comes in at about seven ounces, which is far too light for a hammer of this type. And then I've got this one here. Now, I really like the shape on this one. And again, I got the weight right wrong on this one, but this was a definite improvement on the previous hammer that I made. Um, and I'd just like to point out in between each one of these, so I made two before this one actually even got through to the grinding process. I made this one about three or four times before it got to the grinding process. And then I made this one. And we're better weight now. I changed the starting stock size and I worked through some of the problems that I'd had before, but it still wasn't right. And there were some issues with the layout. So I ended up changing the stock size again. So the final hammer that I have here is the third stock size. I think I ended up using 40 by 25 in order to make this hammer. Um, and these were like 25 by 30, 25 by 30 and so on. Now, this is a process of learning. I'm basically uh, going with something that I know and then trying to build on that to get the results that I'd like to get from the hammer. So, thank you for joining me. Hopefully, there was some information in this video that has been helpful and useful for some people out there. Otherwise, at the very least, hopefully it was entertaining. Now, I just wanna give a big shout out to um, the Dirty Shed Creation uh, boys. Uh, Mark and Alistair, they uh, have some great content over on their channel. They built everything from a oak tree Viking throne to an oak door. Um, they made some really cool lamp things. There's loads of great projects. They res uh, restored little uh, pistol um, thing. So it's a great little channel. Uh, I would really, really recommend if you're into your multiple crafts to go and check them out because they've got some really, really, really good content over there. So go and check them out. Um, they're both quite funny, uh, a little bit crass from time to time, and um, the combination of Mark being a cinema photographer, and I think I've said that right, uh, and um, <clears throat> Alistair being a sort of a handyman, do things, kind of learning on the fly kind of guy, um, means that you get this great combination of very well edited footage, filmed very well, whilst the content that is being filmed and the sort of banter that goes on between the two school friends, I believe they're school, school friends, um, just makes for great content. So please go and check them out. They are a very good channel. They, they do deserve a lot more love and traction than what I um, am gonna be able to get them, um, but uh, definitely check them out. Great, great channel. Hopefully in the future, Alistair and Mark are gonna come up here and do some videos with me. I've got some projects I'd like to work on with them as well. So there should be some more stuff with a dirty, shed creation crew at some point in the not so distant future so look out for that um, and again thank you so much guys for putting that video out i really really enjoyed watching you guys make this and also go and check out their other projects because they are an interesting pair of nut jobs and that's gonna i'm just gonna leave it at that <laughs> What I'd like to have is a series of regular interval classes where we can entertain everyone from the very beginner to very advanced to large groups who want to do advanced projects, um, community projects, and also bring in other Smiths from other countries uh, and all over the UK as well, if possible, to allow them to teach classes when they normally wouldn't be able to. So I want that to happen in the future project, but I also want that to start happening now. So we're gonna start testing the waters. Um, I am going to be offering a series of um, intermediate and beginner classes. I'm not gonna do any of the advanced ones just yet. And um, in within those classes, 
um, I will be able to take uh, four people at the minute per class and um, offer them facilities. They get a fire each, they get an anvil each, they get all the tools they need to do the task in hand. Um, well, when I say you get, you get to use all of the tools and then you get to leave with the objects that we make. So there will be an introduction to blacksmithing, probably make some sort of poker, some sort of bottle opener. There'll be an introduction to um, tong making, which would be a two day class, I think, where we will go over in lots of detail how to make a pair of tongs very well, which should gear you up to leave the course and then go on to make tongs yourself. Um, and you would leave with a pair of tongs, obviously, and also an introduction to hammer making which again might be a two day course, but it will give you the basics to hammer making, um, heat treating, handling and finishing. Basically all of them will cover finishing or most of them won't cover heat treating. Um, everything will be provided that you need for the classes and uh, the location is um, a very good one, which I'm quite, I'm not gonna say anything about it yet, but in the future I'll talk a bit more about it. Um, if you are interested, send me an email uh, in that email, tell me what you'd be interested in doing. Uh, there is a potential to do a introduction knife making course. Now, it won't be... <sighs> I'd like to think that we'd be able to make knives, but I, it's probably more likely we're going to be making some sort of letter opener. It depends on the facilities and the insurance and stuff like that. But anyway, there is a potential to do that. So, in the description there is an email if you'd like to email me and tell me that you would like to do one of the courses tell me which course you would like to do um, I can get an understanding of some sort of numbers and then I can start working on for late October early November putting up some of those well in fact at end of September I should be able to put up some dates and then I will give first refusal to those people who have emailed me and then after that I will put them up publicly. Now, thank you so much for joining me. Hopefully you did enjoy this video. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already. And if you are a subscriber, please make sure you ring that bell for notifications. It'll tell you every time I make a video. Uh, but yeah, thank you so much for joining me. If you'd like to support the channel in any way, shape or form, there's a few ways you can do it and some of them are free. The first way you can do that is to drop a comment down below, say what you thought of the video, say what you thought of my comments, give me any of your tips and information that you think that would be helpful for someone who was a beginner as well. I really love to hear from everyone, I read every single comment and then also if you uh, wanted to help you could share this video, share it on um, any of your blacksmithing platforms or whatever. Uh, that would be really helpful as well because that really does help the channel get some traction too and also you could go over to my Instagram. Instagram is somewhere where I post stories and I put stuff up on the grid from time to time. And it's a way to interact with the channel, which isn't, um, isn't video content, it's just sort of me showing what's going on, when it's going on, showing me doing some video stuff from time to time. So if you'd like to get involved in that way, that's a great way. The link to the Instagram is in the description. You can also uh, head over to my Instagram, uh, Etsy, sorry, and purchase something. This is a great way to support the channel because it directly gives us funds so that I can make stuff, I can make content, and I can send the stuff to you people when you get something that was made here by these hands in this workshop. Uh, so if you're interested in hammers, tongs, t-shirts, merch, my girlfriend makes all the t-shirts, and so on and so forth. So um, I'm gonna get some more block brushes in soon, we're gonna send some punch lube and all sorts of stuff. So um, yeah. If it's blacksmithing related, it's probably over there. I'm gonna leave the video there. Thank you so much for joining me. I will leave a link here to a video that YouTube thinks that is best suited for you. This video here is the most recently uploaded. This one here is the Dirty Shed Creation video that I was using as a reference for this one. And this is a subscribe button. Thank you so much for joining me. Goodbye.